after that. Oh my gosh. Okay. So is your dog barking or is your puppy barking? Um, maybe you have an older dog who has recently developed a bad habit of just randomly barking, barking at people, or you have a new puppy and you are not able to control the outburst. And so we wanna talk about how you guys can come up with solutions and corrective uh, behavior for your puppy or older dog. And so there's a lot that goes into this and some things that you have to um, first find out is, just like all of the other things we talk about, you gotta bear with me here because I gotta find all my little buttons. Alexis is heading out. She is leaving um, to help dog sit. Um, and so the first thing that you want to ask yourself, I got to set these, sorry, um, is what's causing this behavior. So is your puppy uh, being territorial or protective? And the reason we're going to ask ourselves these questions is because in order for us to find a solution um, and try to fix this behavior, we have to know what's causing it. And there's multiple reasons why dogs are barking. You got to remember that dogs barking is natural. That is how they communicate. So whether it's good or bad, that is normal for them. And so we don't always want to discourage it because that is the way they talk. And then especially with the Alaskan Klikai, they are a very vocal breed. So if they're vocal, we want them to talk. We like the RRs, right? But we don't like the excessive barking. So we have to identify what it is that our dog is doing. Is it something that we need to correct or is it something that is very normal and it's not affecting anybody, it's not hurting anybody um, and we just have to deal with it. So we wanna ask ourselves, is this um, where they're being territorial or being protective? And that is like if they're, barking because somebody's getting too close to their owner or too close to their food bowl, um, those types of things where it's not a constant bark, but it's just more of a protective um, bark or more growl-like. Um, so there's usually different sounds that they're going to make whenever it's this type of, uh, I wouldn't even want to really call it a bark, but more of a sound. Um, and so if it is that, okay, we know it's that. So then I'm gonna tell you what the next one would be. So then you are going to ask, is it going to be like, I guess I have to set all of these. I thought it would do it all together. Um, is it going to be that they are barking because they're alarming us or maybe they are fearful? And so remember that when they're raised with their mother, the only way they communicate verbally is by barking or crying for their mom. So if they're hurt or if they're hungry, what are they doing? They're whining, they're crying, they're barking, and mom usually comes running. And so it's very natural for them to bark or cry or howl for their owners because they're trying to alarm us of something or they're scared and afraid and they're barking out of that. And the reason they're doing that, even though they're scared, they're barking because they're hoping that that bark is going to scare that person away or that prey away or whatever it is that they're barking at. Um, and so it could be this. So we need to know if it is or isn't. And then probably one of the most common ones. I love that I have to fix all of these. Um, is that they are bored or they're lonely. And so that's a big one that I know we're gonna be talking about because in our breed, uh, it's pretty common and it's probably a pretty big topic for any new puppy owner um, that doesn't exercise enough or doesn't really know how to keep structure and schedule. So um, we talk about structure and schedule a lot around here um, because if we don't, uh, our dog is going to get very bored very easily and they will resort to something else. And sometimes it's barking because they're bored. So we'll talk about how we're going to be able to try to resolve that problem. And you're leaving? Okay, bye, hon. I love you. Um, now she made me lose my place. That's okay. Be careful. Love you too. She's going to house sit. So she is gone for 10 days. Look at 
those babies. All right, next is, do they want to play? So are they doing the more like what you're seeing right now? where they're barking because they want to play either with each other or with somebody else. <laughs> we hear that a lot here. Um, so that's a possibility. And then there's only a few more. We've got... Attention. So are they seeking attention? So are they needing love and affection and attention from their owners. Um, and that's probably another big one that we're gonna be touching on because I know me personally, I deal with that with my dogs if I'm too busy and I haven't spent enough time with them. Um, and they will definitely be barking at us. And it is that nuisance bark that is like, oh my God, I hear you already. So we definitely wanna touch on that one. And then um, the last one is, separation anxiety um, and a lot of people do talk about separation anxiety and so that could be another reason why your dog is barking so there are there's probably more but these are probably the most common reasons why your dog is barking um, and I'm not talking about like a bark real fast and then it's over I'm talking about like they won't stop it's a nuisance you ready to pull your hair out because it's frustrating um, and you're, you don't know what to do. Okay. All right. Before I get on to them, I will take a few questions. And this really cool thing happened. We got a new, we got an update to our program that we live stream with. And so it stars the questions. So, well, it doesn't technically. I've got a helper right here. She doesn't want to be on camera. But Kylie's helping me, and so she is now able to star your guys' comments. And now, hopefully, I won't miss them. But if you don't put question marks, we're still going to skip over them because we're going to miss out. So the first question I have is from Sonia. Oh, can I still do that? Oh, I can. So the... We're doing trial and error, so bear with us here. Okay, so Sonia's asking, is the alpha of the litter more vocal than um, more submissive puppy? Uh, not necessarily. So because they are, I mean, if you're just talking vocal, like as far as just talking and playing, um, I don't think so. They, especially in this breed, they're all pretty uh, vocal, but maybe for different reasons. <laughs> Um, but I wouldn't say that one that's more submissive or one that's more um, outgoing is going to be more um, vocal. Now, if you're talking barking wise, um, and maybe you are. Hi, honey. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Um, I don't think so either. I think maybe there will be different reasons, especially with the ones that are a little more submissive. Like they might. <laughs> Did you guys see that baby? <laughs> Did you see it? Uh, they, if they're more submissive, maybe they're more fearful or more timid. Maybe they're barking more because of a specific reason. So, all right, next question. Cecilia, do we know where the wait list is standing now and who are available to make offers? Um, so Cecilia, we, I put this up on the calendar, or up on the camera, but um, we don't really discuss that on here. So. We would have to talk about that in private, so you can email me and um, we can talk about it there. And then Tanya is the last question here. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Oh, are you able to see all of these? No, huh? I'm gonna move this. Um, Tanya, how often do puppies typically bark at eight weeks old? Not, the only reason they're going to be barking at eight weeks old is um, if they are not happy want to be with their owners. So some of those questions that we just talked about is separation anxiety, wanting to be with their owners more, um, not wanting crate time, right? Not wanting to be trained at all. Um, not necessarily the fearful, the protective stuff at eight weeks old, no. It's more of dealing with the whole structure and training um, and getting your puppy used to being alone 
for a short amount of time until you can build your puppy up. Okay, so I wonder, can you unfavorite these now? Mm -hmm. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm hoping this will work out really well for you guys. Um, hey, do me a favor, guys, in the comments. We changed a lot of things with our, our sound and our camera views. And so I'm hoping that the sound for the puppies is a little bit less and you can hear me a little bit more. But let us know in the comments um, below so that way we can... Uh-oh, uh do we have... Somebody we have to ban, I see. Yeah. Okay, so uh, shout out to our wonderful moderators who put people in timeout and ban them for um, spamming us because that's what they do. They go on and spam people for whatever reason. But All right, so the first one, let's talk about this. And that was the... Um, uh, why aren't these in order? It drives me crazy. I'm going to fix this. You guys bear with me. I got to fix this. Or else you're going to be dealing with me going all over for a minute. There. I put those in order. Okay. So the first one ah, is the territorial. What did I just do? Did you see that? Look at. Oh, there. <gasps> Sorry. I'm still in training. So territorial barking. Um, now, when they're a puppy, there's two things. When they're a puppy and they're doing this, um, it is because they are so overly attached to their owners um, and they don't want anybody else near them. Uh, they don't want attention to be given to anybody other than them. Um, I, I kind of deal with this a little bit with River because he's so obsessed with me and it is a problem that he's obsessed with me, even though we think it's adorable and we love that our puppy loves us more than the rest of our family members and always wants to be with us, but it's, it's not necessarily a good behavior and it's something that we need to work on correcting because what happens is then when anyone else comes near, even another dog, um, River will bark at them, um, Nala used to do this. Nala doesn't do it anymore, but Nala used to do it as well because she was so attached to me. Um, and so for that, we really have to be careful with allowing it. If we allow whatever dog we're holding or touching to, to react that way, then they are going to continue to do it. And, and if other dogs respond with moving away or stop coming to us because um, of the other dog barking, for example, River, then River is now teaching them that I belong to him and no one else, I'm off limits, like no one else can come near me. And so we have to correct that right away. So don't hold your dog too much if he's doing that. Um, don't give him extra treatment, right? Because then we're encouraging him to do that. But the way we can try to prevent it to begin with is to make sure that we do give our dog plenty of exercise um, and plenty of time with us because what they're doing is they're thriving for that attention. And so if they don't get enough attention, and I will be the first to admit, yes, me, I, I don't always have enough time to give my dogs one-on-one -on -one attention. And knowing that he needs that, sometimes I have to make exceptions to say, okay, nighttime, we are going just me and him going out and spending some time together or work on some individual training to help ease his mind and make sure he knows that I love him, but I love everybody else and give him his own time away from the rest of the pack. Um, but if he continues to do that with the pack, then he can't be associated with the pack all the time until he learns. And so you put them down and you don't pay attention to them and everyone else is getting the rewards. And if he can't behave, then he's going to have to go in timeout. Um, but the better way to handle it is to just make sure that he's already gotten some of that one-on-one -on -one time. If it's outside of your house, um, it's probably going to be the same where you have to put them down. So I feel like this happens more when we carry our dogs. So when we carry our dogs a lot and we don't maybe give them enough attention. So we can correct it pretty easily if we are aware of that and we handle those things. Um, are you good, Taylor? All right, and so the second one was the um, the alarm and fear, and so that is going to be if if they are alarming us because the doorbell, 
right? If they are alarming us because there's somebody out the window, um, they feel like it's their job to let us know that somebody's there or something is going on. And that's not a bad thing, right? But if they continue to keep barking and barking and barking because there's kids outside playing, then that's a problem. And so for us to try to prevent that and teach them that that is not okay, the first thing you want to do is take them out of the situation. So obviously we're inside, that's happening outside. So you either have to take them away from that room, close the blinds, um, redirect their attention to something else. And you have to start desensitizing them to this behavior. So anytime you see this opportunity to where somebody is walking by or the doorbell is ringing, then you, and for especially for the doorbell ringing, you can do it yourself, you know, have somebody um, pushing the doorbell to just slowly desensitize them to that sound, to that reaction. Um, and slowly but surely it'll become normal. But right now it's not normal to them and they think it's their job to tell us of everything. If they're barking out the windows and all of that, they think it's their job to tell the people or the other dog that this is my house, this is my home, and you're not welcome here. And so you slowly have to just desensitize them. So any opportunity that you get to just take them to the window if they're out there and then redirect their attention back towards you so that they're used to it, but it's not a big deal. You're not making a big deal out of it and it's fine. But eventually they're going to learn that that's an okay situation. Now, if it's the fear side of things where they're barking and they are afraid, that's probably something that you're gonna have to find out what is it that they're afraid of. I, uh, I really haven't experienced this, um, so I don't have a whole lot of insight for you on the fear side of things. Um, and you might want to talk to maybe a behaviorist or your vet to find out what you can do. I will say when it comes to fear, um, if it's just because they are not really a, aware of the surroundings and it's new and uncomfortable for them, then that goes back to socializing. And so once you start socializing and, and making routines and getting them used to those things that they are afraid of, then it will become second nature to them. Um, so that's really all I can give you on those two is socializing and talking to a specialist if in fact it's something more than um, what I have seen. All right, and then I'm gonna continue this before I go to your guys' questions, okay? And then the boredom. So this is a big one, right? Boredom. Um, if your dog is barking outside, they're loose, they're out there, even when they have another dog with them, or even when the kids are there and they're just barking and barking and barking and they're, they're telling us, hello, this is boring, I don't wanna be here, why am I not inside? Or they're barking in their crate, um, which could be loneliness, right? But part of it could be separation anxiety, so there's it could be a multiple thing, so you just have to figure out which one is it. Um, if it's because you're gone all day and they're locked up, they're definitely bored, they're definitely lonely. And so you have to try to give them an outlet. That means bringing in a dog sitter, that means taking them to doggy daycare, that means exercising them more, coming home at lunch, hiring the neighbor, to give them something to do because dogs are made to be companions. They're made to be with people and not be at home alone all the time. And so if they're bored, we have to find other ways to, to let them release this energy and loneliness. And that could be with puzzles and other games as well. But if you're gone all day, really it's hard. You're not gonna be able to do much about it if you're gone. You have to get a way to get them that um, stimulation. All right, and then Kelly's busy over here. I like it. Uh, and so then after the boredom one, we've got, they want to play. So this happens a lot. It happens a lot here. They're barking and playing. And this really isn't something that I would say is a nuisance bark. Um, it's, I guess sometimes it is a nuisance bark because we don't want to play or we're too busy to play. But it also goes back to, us not having enough time for our dog or spending enough 
time exercising and mentally stimulating them and they're bored. But usually when it's, they want to play, this is something where it's vocalness. They're just playing. They're telling you, this is their form of communicating. They are telling you, Hey, I want to play. I want you to keep throwing this ball at me. Um, or I want the, the toy thrown, whatever it is that you're doing. And we ignore that, then they're barking to tell us that. So if it is a behavior that you're not wanting because they're doing it all of the time, <laughs> um, then that's a sign right there. That sign is telling you, you're not giving your dog enough attention. You're not giving your dog enough playtime. You're not giving your dog enough exercise. So you need to find ways to mentally, physically challenge your dog, exercise your dog, tire out your dog so that they stop barking. Make sense? A lot of that is just play bark, but again, it sometimes is annoying because we don't have the time for it. Um, and so of course this, it, it all goes hand in hand guys. So now it's attention seeking. So they're wanting to play, right? But aren't they kind of linked? Like sometimes they want to play because they, they need exercise. Sometimes they want to play because they want attention from us, um, and affection from us. And so have we seen our dog today? Are they home alone all day? And that's why they're barking. Um, usually if we're gone a lot, this is going to be it. And when we come home, we put our stuff down, we got to make dinner, we got to do homework and we still haven't paid attention to our dog. And so again, they are going to bark, be destructive, get into things. Um, if they don't get that attention from us and they don't need a lot of attention. If you think about it, if you're giving 20, 30 minutes several times throughout the day, it's really not that, that much. So, and it doesn't have to be exercise walking outside. Like we talked in the past about how you can exercise in your house. I mean, you literally can sit on your back porch, throwing the tennis ball and have him chase it. Um, and that's exercise and it's attention. But to us, it's really not that big of a deal. But to our dogs, they think, oh my God, we're finally paying attention to them. So it could be that. And the only real way for you to solve that is to make sure they're getting enough attention. Separation anxiety. So we talked about separation anxiety in the past and a lot of people will classify their dog's behavior uh, as separation anxiety, but it's not always separation anxiety. So keep that in mind. It's not always separation anxiety. Sometimes it's just, we have to train our puppies and all of that takes time. And it's just easy to throw our hands up and say, oh my God, my dog has separation anxiety. Um, but a lot of times it's just trained behavior and we need to teach them that it's okay to be alone for a little bit of time that we're going to come back. But if it's true separation anxiety, where they literally are breaking through crates and um, being destructive and will not stop crying for hours and hours, then it's probably separation anxiety. But if it's eh, 10, 15, 20 minutes and they give up and they go to sleep, it's probably not. It's just training and teaching them. We're going to come back. We promise we're going to come back. All right, so those are the questions and hi honey, um, and how we can resolve some of those problems if we are seeing our dog barking constantly because of those um, six items. And so I'm gonna open it up for a few more questions here before we move on. Oh my God, this is so cool, huh? Yeah. This is so much nicer. You guys have no idea. This is amazing. All right, so Scott's asking, um, our dog Olivia barks randomly at select people on walks. There seems to be no reason. Um, oh, it just went off way too fast. Um, there seems to be no reason um, who she picks to bark versus who she doesn't. Any tips on getting her not to bark in this situation? Okay, so this is one of the things that I was gonna just talk about. Um, 
So one way for us to try to solve our problem with the dog barking, if we're home and if we are in control and we're there, which this is a perfect example of, is we have to make sure that we are always grabbing our dog's attention. So one of the very first things we teach you, if you guys watched my video on um, the three things to teach first, the very first thing is their name, getting them to get your to give your I can't even talk in giving their attention to you so focusing on us right and the command and the first command and so that is key if we cannot get our dog's attention and control them at all times we're going to have one problem after another after another so make sure that you are able to control your dog and get their attention that means focusing on you when you call their name when you call them period, even if it's not on a leash and you're in your yard, that they come to you and they respect you when you're walking and you, you call their name, they look up at you. Um, and so that's the first thing is being able to always control the situation by having them get the attention onto you. Second thing is making sure that you can look to the future. We can see far away that, oh, there's somebody walking behind that tree over there or they're coming up on that side of the road. And so what we're gonna do is get our dog's attention and we're going to reverse, go the other way, go across the street and call their name and get their attention. So we're distracting them, right? But if we can see it before it even happens because we know our dog randomly does this, then control it that way. You wanna avoid it before it ever happens. Um, and so that would be my suggestion is try to avoid it before it ever happens. And even if it gets to the point where you are able to still walk in there in close proximity, but you can control your dog. So ultimately you don't want to always have to avoid people, right? You want to be able to walk and your dog be good. So the first key is being able to grab their attention. Once you have that down, then you don't have to avoid that situation. But when you see that they're coming close, you can grab their attention. All right, that was a long one. Is there a certain age where protective tutorial barking starts to show up in puppies? Ooh, um, I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. I Just so you guys know, I am, I am not a... A therapist I am not a behaviorist I am not even a dog trainer I am just a dog breeder and a dog owner for the last 20 years so I give you guys my tips and experience based on what we have seen and dealt with um, and what works and what doesn't work um, but I don't always have the answers and I might not always be correct in every situation um, so unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that. I think a lot of it has to do with the breed and the situation if you um, are constantly carrying your dog and they feel threatened from other people taking attention away from them, um, then possibly it could be kind of young. But most of the protective tutorial, tutorial, uh, I'm not on tutorial, <laughs> on territorial situations is... Um, not super aggressive in this breed, at least from what I've seen. Like, yeah, they might growl or give warnings, but they don't go out and just lunge at people and they're not that type of vicious. But either way, you still don't want this behavior. Okay, Laura, our trainer told us to feed treats when the dog barks at unfamiliar things, like the vacuum um, mailman. But at what point... Um, are we inadvertently and reinforcing the barking when we do that? Yeah, exactly. So that's a good question and a good point. So yes, in the beginning, it's all about the reason why your trainer is saying that is because in the beginning, you're getting your dog's attention. So you're redirecting them without them even realizing that you're redirecting them. And because they're a puppy and they're young, the way for us to motivate them to get attention is through reward. Is through praise and so they're pulling in because of the food um, because they're puppies and they're eager to please us so once you have been able to consistently grab their attention then that's when you're gonna slowly start getting off of the treats um, and you're not going to respond to that behavior at all so 
I would say as soon as you notice that they are responding constantly to your attention when you when you're seeking that, then you will transition because eventually, yes, you are right. You will start, they will start to believe that that is a behavior that is rewarded every time you do it. Um, good question. Negan, <clears throat> um, would having two puppies being raised at the same time curb some loneliness and separation anxiety while at work? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Two is better than one. They will keep each other busy for sure. Uh, they will tire each other out and they won't be as bored and lonely. Just keep in mind that if you do get two dogs close in age, that they will still require um, exercise one-on-one -on -one time with you so that they bond with you. Uh, because what could happen if you don't spend enough quality time with each puppy individually is they will become what I call dogs dogs and dogs dogs to me is when they prefer each other for companionship over us and so we don't want that we don't want them to just be two best friends that don't care about us and decide they don't ever want to listen or be with us so just keep that in mind <clears throat> All right. Sierra barks at some dogs we walk by, but not others. Usually it's when we don't say hi to the dog and they're walking away. Any thoughts on how we can make her less reactive um, to these situations? Um, I, I think that she is just saying, hey, I want to bark and, and I want to see them. I want to talk to them. And so um, unfortunately, because you don't know when they're going to do it and when they're not going to do it, Either you are going to have to just keep introducing her um, or avoid those situations. I mean, when she's barking and, and she's a puppy, so she's definitely friendly and outgoing, you can ask them if you can um, introduce them to her. And that's going to be good for socializing too. And eventually you're going to desensitize her from that. Now, there are situations when some dogs are not that friendly and you can't. And so, of course, that's why you want to ask them. Um, but you just want to try to introduce her to as many dogs as possible. That's why we say to introduce to hunter dogs um, or other, other animals because you're going to start to desensitize them from that. And then it's going to start to be normal. So it's really just going to take time. And I know that she just got her shots and you're finally getting her out and about. So it'll probably take a little while, but be consistent. I would just keep going with it. Don't make a big deal out of the barking. Oh my gosh, it's my little friend Alexia. Uh, does having a single dog um, better so they're not competing? Yeah, so I mean when you only have one dog, then they're not competing. So yes, but one dog is going to require you to spend a lot of time with them. And so some people don't have um, all of the time in the world to spend with a puppy. And so having two gives them that companionship so we can have a life outside of our puppy. So there's good and bad pros and cons with both of them. And while we're on this, um, since Alexia decided to ask her question, I wanted to say last week, Alexia won, um, no, two weeks ago, Alexia won a, um, hoodie. And I knew that Alexia was young, but I didn't know how young. And so, um, I asked her parents because her parents emailed us because, of course, I didn't have an address. But Alexia is from New York, and her parents emailed us and gave us her address so we could mail it to her. And she sent a little note and a picture. And I am giving a shout out to her because she's very young. I don't even know for sure, but she's very young. And she is on here every week asking questions, uh, wanting to learn a lot about the dogs and breeds and raising puppies. And so um, I wanted to share with you guys her little message um, because it's super cute. And so here it is. I should probably make this a little bit smaller. But she says, thank you for the hoodie. I love the channel because of the super cute puppies and the great facts you share. I've learned lots of things from your channel, like how to keep your puppy or dog healthy and happy. But the most important is that the puppies nap. So right there, that re that just showed me that she actually listens to every video because how often do I tell you guys 
to make sure that your puppy gets naps, that they're tired, they're cranky, and they need naps. Um, so it just really brightened my day when I got this. And so I wanted to say thank you so much for supporting our channel and always being on here, especially because she's in New York, guys. She's in New York and she stays on here and watches our show. And you got to bear with me here because I thought I put the, um, the picture right here, but it didn't happen. Uh, okay. But I want to show you guys, I got permission from her parents to, to share, but I got to share because we bought her a, um, a separate hoodie because she's so little. Why can't I find it? And I can't type. Just so you guys know, I went to the vets today. My vet appointment was at 3.45 and I didn't get home until five and the live starts at six. So we were kind of scrambling. Um, Here it is. <laughs> so I will show you guys how cute is this. Whoa, it shared a screen. That is not what we wanted to do. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my gosh. I have to get this. Can you figure out how to do this? I think maybe I have to download it again. <clears throat> Yeah, I've been driving to that desktop probably. There. There she is. Our our probably our youngest fan. But thank you, Alexia. I know I went uh, on a long tangent with that one, but thank you and thank you for supporting it. And I hope you enjoyed that sweater. Okay, moving on. Everybody make sure you say hi to her. <laughs> All right, my last one, Jessica. My dog will de defensively bark at most dogs when they walk by. I'm having a hard time calming him. He was bullied by two dogs in the past. He is not mean, um, but he's scared uh, of bigger dogs. So you're going to have to start at the beginning with desensitizing him to the big dogs. Um, and so hopefully if you can get him into like some type of um, class where it's like a socializing meetup where you know the dogs are friendly and big because we want to desensitize him from big dogs because the only thing he remembers is fear from that big dog and so he's definitely gonna be barking in fear of them coming too close to him um, but that's gonna be a slow process of desensitizing him and introducing him to a lot of bigger dogs um, in hopes that he will have some good experiences to overcome that. Um, and if he doesn't, then the best thing for you to do is to be able to predict and see, you know, other people coming and going with bigger dogs and try to avoid those situations, get his attention, direct him and go the opposite way. But he is going to be getting his attention so that he's not constantly barking at them. So if he is treat motivated or toy motivated, whatever it is that you are able to get his attention with, then start carrying that around with you whenever you are going on these walks. And then once you feel a little comfortable with him, like actually paying attention to you, then do it intentionally, you know, go out and see how he does a few times. Um, yeah, that's going to take a little time though for you to get him. Wow. The puppies are tired. Huh? All right. Do you want to, so do you want to undo yeah. these? All right, I'll let you do that. Um, so that is the questions that we had. And um, I wanted to now talk about a couple of things that I have for you guys. We're giving away a new item today. Um, so we... I say we, I have decided that, um, I am too busy to be doing the merchandise and promoting that stuff. And, um, honestly, I feel like the younger girls, my daughter and, and my son's 
girlfriend, Kylie, who's right here helping me. They have more time. They're in college. They like Instagram. They know how to make all that cute stuff. And so I told them that I would give them the shop store if they worked hard at it and um, promote it and make something of it. Like it's up to them. If they want to do it, hey, do it because I just don't have the time. And so they made mugs. And so we're super excited. Um, they already have them up on the website. See how good they are? If I did this, I wouldn't even have it on the website for probably three weeks. But they made a few mugs, and I know they're working on a lot of different designs and fun stuff. But how cute are these? You said we're giving away this one, Kelly? And we're giving it away for a dad because we hardly ever have things for dads. All right, I'm going to show you on. I'm going to clip this one in. So I hope you don't mind. Here, baby. Oh, you're not in it. <laughs> Okay, look at this mug. Is this adorable or what? And so they made regular mugs. Um, they are on the website. I'm gonna show you the mom one that they made. I'll put them up together. And then the back of this one has flowers. I don't know what all you guys are coming up with, but shipping is kind of expensive. So I need your help. If they put them at a lower price and said plus shipping, do you guys like that? Or do you like it when there's no shipping and you'd rather pay four or five dollars more, but it doesn't say shipping? Like, I have no idea. I'm not a merchandiser. But the girls are trying to figure this out because it's the cheapest is five dollars to ship a mug. And that's close by. So I need you guys to put in the comments for us. So we are going to give away a dad dog a dog dad mug um today and help support their new shop and also i'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor and if you haven't already hop over to the um shop store that is on our website um so that way you guys can see what they have but if you are interested in a mug you better make sure that you are communicating with us here today and asking questions and engaging and do me a favor and hit that thumbs up anything else you wanted to add on there <clears throat> there's a new shirt on the website too oh that's right they have a new shirt too that they just made um so there's a new shirt on the website the tumblers are on the website now there's a couple of mugs they can also do custom mugs so if you guys wanted a custom mug with pictures keep in mind mother's day is coming so how cute would that be um so Kylie's going to be picking a winner here on, on this here. Oh, I need to clear this for you. Um, but yeah, we want to hear from you guys on the mug pricing. Like, do you want to see all that? And then I'll pick that in here a little bit. And then what else was I going to talk about? I guess I know you guys want to see puppies. We got a bark box in the mail and I saved it. I didn't open it so we could open it together with you guys. Now I can't find it. Hey, honey. Do you know where the bark box went? Well, if we find it, we'll open it. Maybe that'll wake all the puppies up. I'm going to have to wake them up. I'm going to have to go in there and wake them all up. Okay, so we are going to move on. Are these on? You, we don't have new ones, right? <coughs> There's no new ones here? I don't think so. We're going to move on um, while uh, Alexis, sorry. I'm sorry, why, I'm going to call you Alexis now. While <laughs> Kylie figures out who's going to get the mug um, and if there's any other questions, I am going to switch gears and show you guys some puppies. Um, so, of course, we have a lot of puppies. I'm going to hold off on the little or the big ones for a second since they're all asleep. But I'll go in there because we have the big camera view and hold them up for you guys here shortly. But I'm going to show you... Um, Nala's puppies and Diamond's puppies and Siggy's puppies are sleeping. Let's see. Are they going to wake up? So I will grab, um, oh, yeah, they're all sleeping. Puppies. Everyone's quiet. So I'm going to grab some puppies for you guys. It's so crazy. It's quiet. Um, starting with Nala's baby. So I'll grab Nala's baby because she's right here. I'm going to grab Nala's. I put all right here. Oh. You want to get up here? Sure. Oh, my husband's home, so. Huh. Um, what do you guys think of the new live? You guys like the coloring of the cameras? Wait till you see this. We bought a new camera so that it'll focus because not having a camera to focus on puppies when you live stream puppies is kind of silly. 
you ask me. Okay, 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 okay. I just need to switch this to you. All right, Nala's baby is coming up. All right. How is that look? Did it focus? Look at that. It focus. Oh, my husband says closer. <laughs> She's looking at herself. She's like, whoa, <laughs> what in the heck is that? So Nala's baby girl is identical to her when she was this age. Little tiny baby. And she's porker. See how fat she is? Because she's the only puppy in the litter and mama feeds her too much. Um, so that's Nala's puppy. I think we named her Flora, I think. And then uh, Diamond's, you wanna see Diamond's babies? Um, she's right here. Pup pups, wake up. You want me to get her? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Diamond is very protective of those puppies. So. Come on. You want to let her outside then? Yeah. That'll be better. Come on. Go. Okay. Go. Come on. Go. Can you hand me those other ones? Yeah. So that way um, I don't have to go back over there. All right. So Diamond has three puppies. This one is a girl. Their eyes are open now. Barely. Ah, they're barely open. Um, she has two girls and one boy. So you gotta look that way. So eyeballs are open now, finally. Um, hey, I, I, honey, can you tell me, can you look on your phone? How, how does the color look? Because I dimmed my screen. Do I, should I put the other light on when I hold them up close? Or is it good? Uh, I think it's good. Oh, okay. Yeah? Yeah, look at Oh, okay, cool. All right, and then Oh, yeah, the other girl. And then the other girl. So both girls, so you can see one is small. I'll show you this. <laughs> the quality looks good. It does, huh? Yeah. So she's a lot smaller than her. <laughs> she's like, get off of me. But. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that it freaking. I think when you sit down, the lighting is better because when I sit, it's better. So the whole thing is standing up. Uh huh. And then. Hey, babies. Hey, yeah. Yeah. The lighting gets orange if you're yeah. not like. Oh. Right. <clears throat> because of this lighting. Yeah. 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 So it's probably better right here. Yeah. Ah. But if we put the other light right there, then it'll be really good. Remember we did that yesterday? Mm -hmm. It's right here. If you want to hold that up for me. The light? Yeah, see that light? The little tiny light? Watch so they can see their eyes really good. Yeah. Not that. Oops. Not that bright. And go up with it. Just turn it up. No, put the light up. Up. Up, honey. Flip it up. Oh my god. Oh, like this. Yes. See? <laughs> He's in training. This is the boy. And then angled that way a little. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the boy. Look at how big he is. He's big. All right. Now we'll do the girls again since you're right there. I love you. See? Now you can see the, their eyes a lot better. Right? Mm hmm. Oh, you got food on you. You got food? What is this? Yeah. 
Well, that puppy's gonna climb out of my lap. Stay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's Diamond's puppies. Um, I'm going to put them all three up real fast. If I can. Wait. What's, why did the light do that? When you can't, when turn, you it, can't do it. turn it. Turn <clears> it. <throat> there. There. Good puppies. Okay. Thank you. All right, and now I'll grab Siggy's, or if you'll grab Siggy's. Yeah. I'm gonna hook that on there. All right, so we will show you Siggy's. Um, yeah, they're all asleep, but that's fine. I'm gonna, it's fine. We'll just go with it. <laughs> I'm gonna put this right here and see if I can get this to work for you guys. Maybe. Okay, we got, I need this hooked on there. If you put it right here for me. Yes. Yes, that's better. <laughs> okay, that, this was the boy. And then let me see her and the girl, one of the girls, there's two girls. Good girl. <laughs> okay, Kylie, can you give me the other two? Yeah. Where? Right there in the pen. That's two of them. They're big puppies. So they're four weeks old. I see how big they are. I'm just waiting for her to give me the other two. Um, when, I, when I'm holding the other two, then maybe um, that you can get the little clamp. Or you can set it down and then get the clamp. You know where the clamp is? Right there on the desk. All right, this is the other girl. Wait, I'm gonna hold on, because otherwise I will drop these puppies in my lap. Yay. Thank you. And then I got her, and then this one in the middle. Yeah, thank you. Okay, all right, the gray one here is the other. He's got the light right here, so I need to see if that'll help it. Did you find it? No. Okay. The, the clamp for the light. Oh. It's right there on the desk, but it's all right. Never mind. So the black and white is the girl. And this one's the boy. Sure. All right, that's it for them. Okay, Yay. I know you guys have questions, so I'll look at those and then I'm gonna go inside. Oh wait, actually we're gonna give away this. Um, okay. The mug too. Okay, let's see. Now they're gonna wake up. Oh yep, they're waking up. Okay, Kylie. You want to pick somebody? Yeah. Oh, I saw someone asked how many ounces they were. They're 15 ounces. Yeah, the mugs are 15 ounces. They're big ones. They're nice, actually. Um, I told the I told them that we uh, we need a whole new set in our kitchen, so they better get busy. Um, and I know Spencer's on here, and yes, we can do whatever you want, Spencer. So um, I'll let her pick, and then I'm going to go in the other. You good, Red? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go inside while she's looking real fast. We're going to switch over to the camera view so I can hop in there and be on the live for a second. 
switches for me. Go to this one right here. That says M. Down. Yeah. No. Nope. Over to the arrow. In the center. Yeah. There. All right. And now you can do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, your phone's right here. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hi, DB. No, 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 no. You guys, you guys, I'm right here. Come here. Hi. I got to sit in here and actually sit up and look at you guys. Hi, I know I've got to come close. They want to see you guys. Yeah, they want to see you. So, um, Sasha's puppies are going home on Monday right after Easter. Happy Easter to all of you anyway. Um, so I'm going to show you them first. No jumping on me. No jumping on me. No jumping on me. Um, where is Sorry. Here she is. We only have one girl, so I'm going to show her first. Here we and then I'll show you guys everything else. These bones are not feeling good. Okay, okay. So Carly is the only. Wow, way better. What do you guys think of that look now? That's so much better. All right, so that's Carly. They're all three. A little over three pounds. Um, and then Cooper. Whoopie Coop. <laughs> <laughs> good boy. That was a good boy. Yeah, that was a good boy. And Carter. I only know all their names because we were just with the vets. Hold on, buddy. I'm gonna get down. Yeah, you don't want to look that way, huh? You don't want to look that way. And where are you at, Mr. Cole? Where are you at? Oh, you must be down here eating my shoes. Oh, yep, over here. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, he is. Come here. <clears throat> Your mama is going to want to see you. And then we have Cole. Cole's the last one. <laughs> Good boy. All right, so that's those four. And then we have our itty bitty bitty baby. Hi. Did you guys all see the video of um of Jazzy's puppies? They were crazy hyper, especially you. So this is my little tiny Duke. Remember, Duke is my little boy who has a club palette, um, but he's doing amazing. He is, you would never know he has a club palette, and my vet thinks that it's closing up on its own. So we might not even have to worry about surgery or anything, hopefully. So he is um, bi eyed. So that eye is blue, and that eye is brown. Huh. Oh, you're a good boy. Oh, you're a good boy. Hi, buddy. And your is over here. You might like this. Huh. There she is. And last is Dice. Little Dicey Dice. Look over there, Mama. Aw. <laughs> Good girl. 
Good girl. Good girl. So that is the babies. Can I go out of here? Uh, can I go out of here? Um, Kylie, are there any questions specific <coughs> that I need to be over here for? I can't sit down because I don't Um, someone me. asked how much do they weigh? I don't know like which ones they were referring to. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, they're all different weights, and to be honest, I can only tell you right now off the top of my head with the litter that um, I just took to the vets, and they're all hovering oh, a little over three pounds, um, three, three, five, three, six, not my necklace, no, um, but they're all different weights. I weigh them every week, but I don't have all that information in my head. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Good. I'm so glad. We hopefully we got this camera problem fixed. Well, hi. Well, hi. 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 I see you guys. Okay. Then I think that's it. Okay. Cool. Then I'm gonna go back over there. So that way, um, I don't get eaten. And then will you have your winner picked? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'm gonna come back over there. What? What? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's it. We'll come over there now. Let go, mister. Cole's eating my shoelace. No, 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 no. Let's see if I can get out of here without them escaping on me. Um. All right. Do you want to announce it, Kylie? Or Sure. Go for it. Kylie's going to pick. Okay. You, you can... Uh... <laughs> No, stay, stay, stay. Got it. Let me go. Let me go back and find the comment. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. And then. Um, and then, we'll, yeah, okay, is that who you want? Yeah. Okay, Kylie picked, so you have to be on here, though, so let's see if you're on. I'm putting it on the camera right now. Ready, set, go. Congratulations, Tamara. Your husband, Jason, is winning our very first mug. Congratulations. Of course, Send me an email with your information. I think I already have it. In fact, I know I have it, but it'll be better for me because I'm busy and I forget. So send that over. And now we can keep going. There's a lot of questions. There is? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to answer. I'm going to start answering questions now, um, but I'm sure you guys want me on camera. Let me switch my... There. Okay. Questions. Is there a certain age when they start barking excessively? If so, at what age does it start and end? Um, so not every dog actually exhibits this behavior. So there's not a set age that it happens. Look at him. He's just sitting there crying because I walked out. <laughs> um, so they don't all do it, unfortunately. So there's really not an answer. It really has to do with um, what's causing them to do the barking. So you have to find out what's causing them to do the barking so that you can address the situation. So there's really not a set. Oh, I could just do it like that, huh? Mm -hmm. oh, perfect. All right, Tamara. Sierra barks at some dogs. Oh, we got this one. Yeah, we did that one. Cool. How many hours do they normally sleep in a day? So that is a good question. It depends on their age. So if they are a young puppy, they sleep a lot. So you're talking about they'll be up for two to four hours, and then they're going to sleep for one to two hours. Um, and that just keeps going and going and going uh, throughout the whole day. So if you stick to the schedule that I've talked about in the past, which is on our um for a routine for your puppy. I even have a link in that um, inside of that video that goes through the whole breakdown of when um, they should be up, when they should be doing training, when they should be eating, napping, all of that stuff, giving them alone time. Um, but they sleep a lot when they're young puppies. Um, and, a, and if they're not sleeping a lot, 
then they are um, not getting enough uh, to come cranky and they will uh, start being bad puppies. So off the top of my head, I don't know exactly how many hours, but it's every like three to four hours. They're going to sleep for one to two. Uh, not really related to barking. Do prepare them all of their babies' new homes. Oh my goodness, that's because moms, like they uh, don't want to be with them all the time because if they do, then the puppies don't stop nursing and they have to start biting and growling. Moms help with that a lot. So we don't have to do a whole thing down the process of how much time they spend with mom, but at the same time, Every dog is different. Some dogs want them gone and some dogs are obsessed and won't stop nursing. So it's not one fits all, but it just takes time and separating them. And that's what makes it really hard for us because then the dogs are still here and they still have to come and go and the puppies are screaming because they see their mom and the mom's like, ah, I'm out of here, I don't want you. Uh, yeah, it gets hard. And that's another reason why I say they have to leave when they have to leave because it makes it very difficult for us um, and the mom dogs whenever they're still around. Um, how long do they live? So this breed um, can live anywhere from 12 to 17 or 18 years. They are a pretty new breed still. Um, so it's really hard to know for sure. I will tell you a lot of clique high will live 16, 17, 18 years, um, but some will will go a little less than that. The camera's full of questions. Oh. Oh no, that was that was your thing. <laughs> Tanya. Um all right. Tanya is when you offer Nala's puppy. I don't know. I gotta get through Siggy's puppy first. So next week will be Siggy's puppies. It won't be for a little bit still. I got to get through what I got. Um, I don't know for sure. They're still too young uh, to know for sure. I do see some blue in, in a lot of them, but the, the smaller one, I don't know for sure if there's going to be blue or not. Uh, so too young. I don't know yet. <laughs> Can you give us an update on our little guy sometime this evening? He is doing amazing, Sandy. Um, watch the video that I posted last week of them. Um, he's back there somewhere. Oh, he's in the very back chewing on a bully stick. Um, the one on the holder. But he's doing great. We're really proud and happy that he's doing so well. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, unfortunately, Tanya, she's a single puppy. Okay, she's still kind of young. She'll be a small mini. Other dogs are people, my dog. The socializing, um, but that's the big thing.